Well, there's never any doubt that my next guest will be following in the footsteps of his grandfather and his dad as far as being involved in harness racing. But like his dad, he also has a very strong worth ethic. I caught up with Justin Reynolds in one of his rare trips to a club in Angle. Well, Justin, good to catch up with you. As I mentioned in the introduction, your grandfather, Russell, your dad, David. So it was always going to be a fait accompli that you were going to be in har involved in harness racing. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, sort of got involved with the horses with um, dad and grandfather, Russell. and Yeah, sort of just started cleaning the stables out for Russell for a bit of pocket money and, yeah, eventually started driving at home and, yeah, ended up getting my driver's licence. One of those rare bruises, you weren't involved in the mini trotters? No, I never really got involved in them, sort of, yeah, just for whatever reason, we never got a pony to do it. I had a riding pony there for a little while, but yeah, never got involved in the mini trots. So right from the word go, your involvement with harness racing was with the feature horses, learning from your grandfather and dad. What was some of the main lessons you learned from your grandfather? I was very particular of how he liked his stables cleaned. If I um, didn't dig them out properly, I uh, got me pay docked a little, but um, yeah, that's probably, yeah. So that's getting back to that very strong worth ethic. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, sort of flat out at the minute. Um, me and Dad work about six, and we both work full time too, so sort of do the horses before and after work, and yes, so pretty flat out. Your dad works with the forestry and you've got a job full-time as an electrician. Yeah, that's correct. I work for a local company in Oberon, Spark Electrical. They've um, been really good to me. They let me um, knock off early to come to the races and that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's really good. It's always good to have a good boss because one thing you like doing, Justin, is travelling to all the country centres. Yeah, I love going out to Dubbo and Parks. Either They sort of alternate each Friday and, yeah, I love driving on them half-mile sort of tracks. Well, in particular, Parks, because Parks, you drove your 100th winner there, the handsome one, for Daryl Dwyer. Yeah, yeah, I got my 100th win on him, and yeah, won quite a few races on him and for Daryl, so yeah, it's good to notch up my 100th on him. Bathurst, uh, Oberon born and bred, I should say, but in that very strong Bathurst region, so you must be delighted the way the country areas are progressing these days, very strong racing. Yeah, Bathurst in particular, yeah, it's very hard to win a race there, and yeah, so very competitive. Now for a young fella, Justin, you had a lot of success in various regions. Representing the region in particular in the Rising Stars would have been a great honour. Yeah, it was a great thrill to um, participate in that. and Yeah, I was lucky enough to get a winner at Bathurst in that. and Yeah, it was a great thrill. You also won the Junior Driver of the Year for Bathurst as well. Yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. Had a pretty good year that year, got a lot of support of different trainers and yeah, mine and dad's team were sort of going good at the same time which yeah, sort of really helped. Must have been a big thrill for the family because you, because of your success at Bathurst you won the Oberon Sports Person of the Year. Yeah, yeah, that was a yeah, bit of a yeah, achievement to win I suppose and yeah. Well it takes some doing, as we mentioned, sports person, so that takes in all different sports and you've been able to do it representing harness racing, a great thrill. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise really, but um, yeah, a bit of a yeah, thrill I suppose. And on the back of all those achievements, representing New South Wales in the Rising Star, another plus in your career? Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. You started your career in 2016-17 and at the age of 21 you kicked off and chalked up your 100th winner, now nearing 180 winners, so you've been going along at a very good strike rate. Yeah, I've been sort of getting a winner here and there, and yeah, sort of makes the trips home a lot easier when you can get a winner sort of here and there. We mentioned you get involved in harness racing as far as the mini trotters, but you did grow up playing sport, different uh, football sports, but you were a very keen squash player. Yeah, I love playing squash, sort of don't miss a comp at home, and um, yeah, sort of we did a travelling away comp at parks, and yeah, sort of raced at parks and then went and played squash in a comp there and yeah but yeah sort of good to get away from the horses a bit sometimes and yeah play squash or do something different but um yeah you enjoy getting to the country cups and you had some success with the country cup the meeting at uh, dubbo winning the red ochre for steve turnbull or now as we refer him now the legend with the horse called morrow dawn yeah that was a massive thrill definitely um my biggest win yet um yeah, it sort of fills you with great confidence when Steve was willing to put me on in a big race like that. And yeah, luckily enough, we were able to get the win. 
You're still very much involved with driving for Stephen. Yeah, he um, yeah he's been really good to me. Um, yeah, couldn't thank him enough. Um, yeah, sort of fills you with confidence when someone that's achieved so much in the sport's willing to um, give you a go and put you on their horses. Now, apart from uh, your grandfather and dad and someone like Steve Turnbull, other influences in your career, Steve Conroy's been good to you, yeah, particularly with a horse called Finery, and Barry Lou. Yeah, I've had a lot of trainers sort of supporting me. I, yeah, drive yeah, for a lot of people. Um, yeah, sort of a thrill when anyone puts me on, really. Um, yeah, like when they're willing to trust you to give their horse their best chance to try and earn for them. It's, um, yeah, obviously means you're doing something right. And Justin, we're in the midst now of the Bathurst Gold Crown Carnival. That's something that every aspiring young driver would love to get a, one of those titles, the Gold Crown or the Gold Tiara to their list of credits. Yeah, especially when you're sort of from that region. It's um, one I'd definitely love to be able to make a final one year, let alone be able to win one. But um, yeah, sort of just got to keep getting a year in each year and hoping they um, can aim up and hopefully one day get there. Unfortunately, on a Friday night, you had no luck with a horse called Mysterious Beach in the uh, Gold Crown. Broke and uh, lost all chance. Yeah, he made a mistake into the first turn, unfortunately. But um, that's racing. That's the way it goes. And yeah, hopefully you can um, have a spell and come back and yeah, go better after that. Well, Justin, it's been good to catch up with you. Good luck in your quest for being involved in the Bathurst Gold Crown. I know every person who comes up through that Bathurst Gold Crown series and live in the Bathurst area and all that, that's one of their uh, bucket lists for sure. Yeah, that's definitely for sure. I'd love to be able to yeah, get a horse in it, let alone be able to win it. But um, yeah, just got to keep searching and keep getting young horses and yeah, hopefully one day get one good enough. Good to catch up with you, Justin. Yep, thank you.